Okay, let's talk about a really, really strange star right here in the Milky Way. A star that technically qualifies as what's known as the zombie star because it basically survived a supernova. But in this case, this is a really extreme object, potentially the hottest object, or at least the hottest star in the Milky Way, produced in a very unusual way and discovered in a very strange way as well. And well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing this relatively unusual discovery from I think about two years ago that we've actually discussed previously, but now we have some updates, some clarifications, and even more mysteries. The mystery in regards to what exactly this object is and what sort of effects it's producing right now, because we've actually never seen anything like it before. But first, a very quick side note. There are lots of different supernova out there, but today we're actually only discussing one type. A type of a supernova that only happens when a white dwarf explodes. The most famous one is the type 1a supernova that usually occurs when white dwarfs reach a certain mass, approximately 1.4 solar masses, at which point they all just explode, leaving nothing behind. Not to be confused with type 2 supernova, which usually results from very massive stars, such as for example Betelgeuse. And so anyway, back in 2013, one of the independent astronomers by the name of Dana Pacek used a public astronomical database to discover what appeared to be some kind of a planetary nebula. These are usually circular objects formed by stars somewhat similar to our Sun, as they essentially release huge amounts of gas during the last years of their life. This then produces a white dwarf in the middle, which illuminates all of this gas, forming this planetary nebula. And so here he thought he discovered one more that was named PA30. But it took a few more years of observations to realize that this is something a little bit more unusual. Mostly because of the emissions that this was producing, it did not contain the same stuff we usually expect from a planetary nebula. No hydrogen, no helium. Yet it seemed to contain a lot of oxygen, a lot of carbon, and even things like sulfur and argon. And even stranger was the velocity of some of this wind in certain locations of this nebula. Normally we expect it to be maybe 100 km per second, here it was 16,000 km per second, 5% of the speed of light. And that made no sense whatsoever. Even the gas on the outskirts was moving really fast at over 1,000 km per second, suggesting an extremely powerful event that must have formed all of this, not a typical sun-like star. Which eventually led to several papers trying to figure out exactly what it is and what event this could be related to. With the first assumption being a supernova, but the thing is, when it comes to Milky Way supernova, we normally have a relatively rich historical records from different cultures, such as for example Chinese and Japanese astronomers, that have kept a pretty good record of what they used to refer to as gas stars. Stars appearing and disappearing within a few weeks or a few months, which we now know are usually supernova, or sometimes nova. And in these records, most of the supernova that they mention have already been traced to either some of the remnants in the Milky Way or certain nebula. Only a handful was left that was not discovered. And so here the researchers first of all realized that if this was a supernova, it must have been visible within the last thousand years. This was of course calculated by using the velocity of the outflow and trying to trace it back to the center. The most accurate calculations suggested that it's probably around 840 years old, plus or minus 50 years. And if that's the case, well, there must have been something in some of the records. And well, yeah, it just so happens that the ancient Chinese records contained another gas star whose origin was unknown. It happened in 1181. And this was seen by three separate Chinese astronomers and at least one Japanese astronomer, with all four suggesting that it appeared to be similar to Saturn in terms of brightness and seems to have lasted for approximately 185 days. Definitely suggesting that this was a supernova of some sorts. And so relatively quickly, several papers came out confirming the origin of this event and tracing it to these records from ancient China and ancient Japan. But this by itself, even though it might sound unusual, is surprisingly common. Quite a few supernovae have been discovered in a similar way. Things did actually become stranger once the scientists tried to figure out what's in the middle of all of this and what's causing all of the illumination, while also trying to figure out why this cloud seems to be made out of not hydrogen and not helium, and has a lot of other strange elements. Now, even though this is about 7,500 light years away from us, this object is powerful enough to physically be visible right in the center. And this is actually the object producing these very powerful winds. Winds moving at 16,000 km per second. And turns out that right in the middle is a very unusual Wolf Raya star. 
A type of a star that we know is usually extremely powerful, produces powerful winds, and sometimes results in a supernova, or sometimes serves as a transition stage for certain baby stars. But here it seemed to be a unique Wolfraya star, with a very unique origin story. First of all, it was enriched in a lot of very strange elements. For example, like I said, sulfur and argon. Second of all, based on the temperature measurements, it appeared to be the hottest object we've ever seen in the Milky Way. 220,000 Kelvin. That's almost 400,000 Fahrenheit for those of you keeping track. Making this one toasty star. But also enriched in a lot of other elements such as oxygen and quite a lot of carbon. And the most likely explanation for such powerful winds was because it was probably very magnetic. And so here we had this very strange, somewhat difficult to explain star. Maybe even the most unusual star in the entire galaxy. Super hot, the hottest out there, containing very powerful magnetic fields producing these very powerful emissions. And so because of the uniqueness of the star and the strangeness of this nebula, it was important to figure out how all of this formed. And the answer is, very likely, a super unique type of a supernova. Or maybe not as unique as we thought. And so here we're talking about a type 1 supernova involving white dwarfs, but probably involving two white dwarfs, and very likely on a collision course. Basically here we're talking about colliding white dwarfs that we know happens sometimes, and quite often results in type 1a supernova. But usually type 1a supernova destroy the star. In this case though, it left what's known as a zombie star. And though initially astronomers believed this was a relatively rare event, apparently up to about 30% of all type 1 supernova can actually result in some kind of a leftover or a zombie. And the reason the scientists now believe it was very likely a collision of two white dwarfs is really because of the elements detected here and because there doesn't seem to be any partner left. It really seems to be a single star here and it seems to resemble something we expect from a collision of white dwarfs just based on the elemental composition. Which also makes this object the only known Wolfraya star that did not start as some kind of a supermassive star. It was formed by little white dwarfs. But unlike models, what's strange about this collision is that the star is still there and is still in the same location. There was absolutely no kick. Normally these events result in what's known as a runaway star, would basically a fast moving star that shouldn't even be there anymore. But in this case, nothing like that happened. And that by itself is already one of the mysteries. But a much bigger mystery came from the recent study that looked at all of this in different frequencies. And you can actually see the mystery by itself in this image. What are those filaments? Why does it look like a tiny hedgehog or like there are needles coming from the center? And so that by itself is already really strange. These filaments are obviously light years long, but don't resemble any other supernova remnant or any other explosion out there. And so here the star is also forming these very structured filaments coming right from the center. But there's at least one explanation that was offered already. It's from the same study in a description. This strange morphology is very likely directly related to the powerful stellar winds. The winds that seem to produce supersonic flows that then interact with much slower moving material, in essence resulting in what we usually refer to as Rayleigh-Taylor instability. This is usually seen in a lot of different fluids or gases, where one of them is more dense or heavier, or if they move at different velocities. This is actually how a lot of different nebula generally form as well. And so likewise here, this unusual morphology is possibly related to the interaction between the super fast wind from the star and the much slower moving wind from the supernova, with the resulting instabilities forming certain shapes that when illuminated by the star become visible as certain types of filaments. I guess maybe somewhat similar to the filaments you see here as well in the Crab Nebula, but because this seems to be a much more extreme object, the filaments here also appear just a little bit more extreme. Or I guess this is just one of the explanations that's currently provided. At the moment, nobody actually knows what's going on here, really making this the most unique object in the Milky Way discovered in the last few years, and potentially the strangest star we've seen in a very long time, producing effects we've never seen before and with properties that even today are still difficult to explain. And so because we can't really answer all of the questions right now, we're going to have to come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. But at least now it's been confirmed that this is indeed the origin of 1181 supernova described by various Asian astronomers. So let's wait and see until someone can actually explain these unusual filaments maybe a little bit better, or someone discovers something else entirely different that might explain everything all at once. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.